This is a little snippet about masking fluid and how to use it and what I use. I like Winsor Newton's colorless art masking fluid because when I'm designing a piece, I like to have the masking fluid show up as white because ultimately my paper will be white. And what the masking fluid does is it blocks your paper from uh, the watercolor or even acrylics. If you're going to paint over a shape, you may want to mask it off and keep it white. There's several kinds of masking fluid on the market that are different colors, and some people prefer to use the colored masking fluid because they can see them better, and that's fine. I have colored my masking fluid today uh, just so you can see it. I put a little bit of watercolor in it. There's several ways to apply masking fluid, and if you want to use a brush, the most important thing to do is to load your brush with water first and then just fill it with soap. I use bar soap, but I've, I've used shampoo. I've used um, just anything. Uh, your dish soap will work. I'm cleaning this out because I've got a little color in my, my brush. And this is one of my good brushes. I don't use a junk brush for masking fluid because I can't make straight lines with it. So I use my brush, my good brushes, but here's the tip. The tip is don't work longer than five minutes. Uh, if it's going to take you longer than five minutes, then you need to clean your brush out and reload it with soap, and then you can dip right into the masking fluid. And when I do dip into the masking fluid, I try not to get into the ferrule of the brush. The metal part is the ferrule, so I try not to get masking fluid up there. But you can see that you can also make a very thin line with masking fluid. And that works great. Uh, you could make a comma stroke if you wanted to. You could make uh, whatever shape that you normally make with your brush. You can do that with the masking fluid. And there are times when I even use my large brush to do this. And um, I'll take my, my good brush, and it's like a 20 flat. And sometimes I have to do a large area. So then I clean the brush. And again, I've got color in this because it's one that I use. And um, I will coat it with soap really, really well. And then just like before, I'll dip into the masking fluid and try and use the tip of the brush and then apply my masking fluid like so. Now, when I have cleaned my brush in my water, I'm going to change my water before I begin to paint because I don't want the masking fluid to go on my watercolor paper. And what happens when you put it in water, being it is a rubber-based product, it kind of disperses, but it doesn't dissolve. And so what you find are little tiny bits of the masking fluid into your water. So make sure that you really uh, take precautions and change the water. There's a lot of tools to use with masking fluid, and one I do often is I use a stylus, and you know most styluses have a big uh, fat end, and then they have a smaller end, and uh, they work great, and you, you don't have to coat those with soap. Now, you can't make, you can make little dots with them, but you can't make too much of a line, but sometimes I use it for a line. And I might have to go over it a couple of times to get the shape even enough. The other thing about using a stylus for anything is to remember the first time you touch the paper, you're going to get a big blob. And that's why I go over it and pull the masking fluid down. It evens it out a little more. Another way is I have a lot of watercolor brushes that have a cut end to them. And see how it's uh, kind of like a sliver. So when I dip into my masking fluid and pick it up, I can do, oops, didn't get much on there. Well, fiddlesticks. <laughs> okay, here we go. Then I will get a fatter line, but it's still a line. Now, if I wanted it narrow, what I would do is take a scrap and do the fat part first, and then come down here and start for the line that I want to be narrow. See? There is also a, um, a bottle that has uh, like a needle on the end of it. And some people use that very successfully for thin lines. 
I've never been real lucky with those, but I know that many people do use them. So anything that you can use uh, to create a nice line, for instance, even the end of a skewer. Uh, sometimes I, when I wanted it real tiny, I've used toothpicks. But if you're going to use a brush, you must coat it with soap first and then rinse it out. And absolutely positively be sure to clean your water before you begin to paint. Now, when you want to remove the masking fluid, mine's not quite dry yet, but what I use is called a rubber cement pickup. And this is what it looks like. Mine's been used on the corners, you can see. And what happens is it picks up a little bit of the color too. So um, if you're going to use the rubber cement pickup, what you do is you use it like this, at least to get it started, and then sometimes you can grab a hold of it and just pull it slowly off your piece, or you can just work the whole thing with this. I'm kind of waiting for this to dry, and I think it's dry enough now where I can show you how I would pick at it. See how the edge comes up? It's not quite dry. But then I could probably get a hold of it like that and just pull part of it off. When it's really dry, that will happen. Okay, now why save the white of your paper? I took a minute to put some more uh, masking fluid on this little piece, and I've painted over it. And now I'm going to remove the masking fluid. And as you can see, it's got some really harsh edges. Now I wanted sharp edges on the outside of my flower petal, but not necessarily on the inside. What I want to do on the inside is make it look like it's transitioning from white paper to pink to darker pink to a very dark pink. Okay, so what I do is I use my scrubby brush and I put some water along the line that I want to soften. The water starts to loosen the pigment, and then I can start to scrub it so that line disappears. Now, what I'm going to do is, I don't want to create another line, I want to create another value. So by working from one side of the map where the masking fluid was, into the pigment, it pulls a little bit of the pigment into the white, just a little, and then it does create another value between the two, and it also gets rid of my hard transition line. Now this is what I'm calling the transition line here. Okay, I'll do it once again on the other side, put the water on it, and it has to have you have to have water to do this. You can't just do it with a dry brush. Okay, and usually I aim my brush from the light toward the dark. So in this case, it would be from the white into the pink, okay? Just soften. I'm actually scrubbing a little, not real hard, but just enough to move that pigment. Okay, now you can see that I have a nice, gradual fade, and I have a couple of other little areas to soften. I'm just evening that pigment out, but the area that I wanted to soften is done. The hard edge is gone. Let me move some of that down there. And what happens is you rough up the paper a little bit, so you need to take and blot it and wipe the excess paper off. The other thing that I do when I have a real hard edge, even at the outside of my flowers, is I'll switch to my soft scrubber brush, which is a filbert, but it's a softer material and then I'll aim it toward the outer edge, and I'm kind of straddling over the pink and the white, 
And this just allows me to soften the edge a little bit. I don't want it to uh, change values because I want the white to stay up there. But I think you can probably see a difference between that and this. And when you're doing this, you also can straighten up any ragged edges that you might have. And just the, um, the nature of a textured paper will give you a little raggedness to your edges. It's not that you did anything wrong. Okay, so we're just softening the edge a little bit. And then I would come back in here and scrub this down a little. And then I would scrub the other side down a little. I'm turning it around because, again, remember I said I put my brush on the light color, aim it toward the darker color. And then I would soften this edge here. And that's about what I wanted. Okay. I didn't do this side yet, so just so you can see the difference between this side and this side. They're still really harsh. There's two edges on that. Okay, then I would be ready to soften the outside edge and soften this inside. And you may think, well, that takes a lot of time. Well, it does take some time, but if you tell yourself when you're doing it, that it is just as if you are painting the white on your piece. That makes you feel better about doing it anyway. At least it did me. Two more important tips. When you're going to apply your masking fluid, it is best to take your bottle, pour a little bit off into a cup, and put your lid back on your bottle right away. Then it won't dry out what's left in the bottle. Also, when you've used a brush with soap on it, and dipped into your masking fluid, you do not want to pour that back into your masking fluid bottle because that will contaminate it by putting soap in it. So um, if you do that and then take a paper towel and just soak up your masking fluid, then you can throw the entire thing out. It won't go down your drain and you don't want to have this down your drain. So remember that. One of the tips that I will share with you about a new bottle of masking fluid, I learned from a chemist at Windsor Newton, and he suggested that you put a little bit of distilled water in it uh, when you get a new bottle, and that keeps it from uh, getting too thick. Now, the reason masking fluid usually gets clumps or gets thick is from shaking it. And it is a rubber-based product, so you never want to shake it. If your bottle is uh, appears thick, then what you do is stir it. Some of the bottles at one point even said shake well on them, and I questioned it and um, was told not to do it. So just passing that along. 